Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone. First of all, a big sorry for being late. Uh, I am late by a few minutes. But as always, yeah, I promise you guys that the, this is well your uh, well worth your wait. What we are going to show you in the next one and a half hours. It's going to be actually a lecture focusing on the Spanish opening. And uh, this is one of the most popular openings in chess. Uh, I just want to uh, show you the thumbnail for today. This is Grandmaster Prithu Gupta. By the way, guys, we had him a few days ago on, on the Chess Base India stream, which was uh, our lecture on Prithu speaking about how he reached from 1200 to 1500 in just five years. It was a fantastic one. All of you loved him uh, and his depth of thought was so amazing that, uh, of course, we had to bring him back uh, on the stream. And this time, what we decided to do is to teach you one of the most... Oops. I need to switch off my <laughs> YouTube. And this time, what we are going to do is we are going to talk about the most complex opening uh, in chess. It's also called... The Spanish, one of the most uh, revered opening. And it's also said that if you don't know how to play the Spanish, you don't know how to play chess. Because it's the most important system. So without any further delay, let me get the man himself on the screen. Hi, Prithu. Welcome. Hello, sir. Hi, guys. What's up? Prithu, uh, how, how's it going? Uh, Last session, we had a great time. Everyone enjoyed. Uh, we spoke about your journey in the world of chess. And today, yeah. why did we decide? Why did you decide to go for the Spanish or the Rui Lopez? Well, um, firstly, I'd like to thank all, all the viewers for a great previous show. I mean, I had um, all these really crazy kind messages pouring with people asking me to become, become the life coach and so on. <laughs> This really kind and heartwarming messages. So I just decided I had to come back, and this time I had to give people something more than they than what they already saw, and something way more worth their time. So since we had the topic of openings on our radar for the past uh, few days, I thought that uh, there'd be no other option than to start with this match. Apart from the absolutely stunning opening, it is from either side. I just love it myself. I mean, I've probably um, played the most amount of games on it from either color as compared to any other line. Okay. Okay. So, so Spanish is one of your favorite. By the way, guys, by mistake, I said 1200 to 1500. Uh, sorry, it's 1200 to 2500. Uh, that's 1300 yes. ELO. I'm very sorry. I keep making this mistake. I don't know why. Uh, and by the way, Prithu, today we have Biswa Kalyan Rath in the chat. Uh, he's one of India's finest comedians. And I think he wants to learn the oh. Spanish opening today from you. So he's My pleasure, here. Sir. And he sent Thank a super you, chat. So let's see if we can teach Biswa and everyone else in the crowd right. to learn uh, the Spanish. So here we go. Uh, here's the chessboard. And uh, what shall we begin with? So as planned, I'm going to be explaining some of my games alongside some of the finesses of the opening as we um, cover the game side by side. And these, I think, are um, four of my most memorable victories. I mean, they may not be against the highest rated players per se, but for me, it's always been the quality that ma any day matters over the type of GM I've beaten. Right. Okay. So first game is against... Vlastmil Jansa uh, and uh, I think he is quite a legendary player if I'm not mistaken very famous Czech right. Grandmaster Czech uh, and uh, this happened in 2019 yes it was at the Grand Swiss 2019 in the Isle of Sun which gotta admit was probably my most disastrous tournament till date but this game particularly stands out in my memory not only because I scored a victory against a good player but also because I kind of proved to myself that I could come back in horrible situations. Okay, okay. And and we're going to look at it from the blacks, pers like uh, Prithu was black. 
So this uh, lecture today is not just about white or black, it's about both sides trying to understand this very complex opening. Uh, and so here we begin with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Uh, tell us a bit about this move. What exactly is happening here? Is white really threatening to take the knight? Yeah, so to start with, as all of you know, g6 is um, not the most popular option. If we go about the statistics, I mean, you of course have many more like um, a6 and knight f6, namely the Berlin Wall and the um, Spanish. So this is the main but, uh, line Spanish with a6 and knight f6 is basically yeah. the Berlin, but Prithu in the game played g6. Okay. Uh, by the way, Prithu, one question from Sri Krumar is, is Rui Lopez aggressive or positional? Um, so, buddy, in order to answer your question, I'd probably say there's, like, just any other vast opening, there's a lot of variety within the lines. There are some lines which, as we were going to explore, become totally crazy, as opposed to the um so-called common nature of the opening which is of it being a very calm and positional line that helps you develop a good sense of um positional play and um typically a game which progresses very slow without any uh anything really aggressive and on the other hand uh, we have these uh, slightly aggressive positions or ones that require a lot of theoretical knowledge which of course as uh, per what my description suggests are those that um, tend to become really very wild. So I think the variety is basically a lot. Okay. And um, it would be a lot more better if we could uh, go about um, speaking on some specific lines. All yeah. right. Okay. So G6 was played and I think Anand also recently has been playing this. By the way, the first question is, if he takes on C6 and picks up this pawn, does it make any sense? Um. Well, it doesn't. I mean, you see, he's just gaining a pawn for one single move, and we just go queen d4 and regain the pawn on the next move with a double bishop and a slightly better position. So, if he goes back, you take this, he may play queen e2, and then you can exchange and put the bishop on g7. You have another bishop, and uh, black is completely fine, you know, even slightly better here. Okay, so in the game. Yeah. Your opponent did not take. He played c3, which is very logical. He wants to expand with d4. Yes. Uh, c3 being one of the main lines. And apart from this, um, people, of course, try options like d4. And the game usually proceeds with pawn takes d4, bishop g5, e7 takes, takes, bishop c6, d6, and queen d4 with. Should I take with the queen or the knight? A lot of chances for both sides, let's say. Uh, when queen. he takes, queen. Oh, yeah, queen yeah. takes, bishop takes, pawn takes. Pawn takes and queen d4, knight f6. This is one of the lines. And you would say this is also around equal? Um, It is around equal. Uh, if we go about the engine's evaluations and um, stuff like that, but... I think it's just a lot beyond equal, which people would, of course, see for themselves as they go about studying uh, this line, which I personally would highly recommend because uh, it just offers a lot of scope for both sides. I mean, mm -hmm. we could even possibly discuss a few ideas. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the possible options is I C3. Okay. And um, game, the game would usually proceed with, with Bishop G4 because... Um, I want to develop my pieces and kick his queen with c5 on the next move, wanting to castle long. And now we oh. have something like um, yeah, something like knight d2, c5, queen e3, long castle. And you see, it's just really very much beyond the equal position as the machines would suggest. I mean, I would have, I would be essentially having ideas like let's say regrouping my bishop to c6, trying to get my knight to d4. And um, he would just probably try to pressurize my king side and get control of the weak dark squares over there. Or maybe, let's say, just strike a blow on the queen side upon getting an opportunity. Mm. So as simple as the position looks, it can go really very um, dense. Okay. And um, 
Right. So, so basically, what I what I'm really enjoying is Prithu's take on this opening, which is like he's very very quick to say things. And uh, last time when we are actually talking with Prithu, he had mentioned that he is very very much interested in studying opening. So you're getting a glimpse of how a grandmaster thinks in the first phase of the game. And it's very interesting. Prithu, I had one question. Instead of knight c3, is e5 dangerous here? Well, e5, I think I, I could simply go knight d5 and um, I should be fine. Yeah, there's no e6 coming just as yet because queen into e6 right. is a check and the rook is not hanging. Uh, and next move, I think white can, uh, black can even castle, yeah, if required. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. And there's not much of danger after all. Okay, so going back here, your opponent didn't go d4, he went c3. Yes. Yeah. C3 again, as you mentioned, is one of the other main lines and um, his idea being to go D4 and um, have those two solid pawns with uh, long-term domination of the center. Yeah. And, um, well, I continue with A6. A6. A6, Bishop A4. I'm, I'm sorry for this, this question yeah. again, but... Uh, for me, it's more like now the d4 square is covered by the queen. So can he right. take? Now again, taking is not an option because he takes with the bishop. I take with the d pawn, knight into e5 and queen g5. Just regaining oh, the g2 pawn with a better position again. Okay, okay. Got it. Got it, guys. Alert, alert. Bishop a4, okay. Right. Always got to be. <laughs> now, what yeah. next? I think you developed your bishop on g7. Yes. He went. So we just go about with typical development and wait for him to do something in particular. So d4, and now this is where the real warfare will start. Yeah. The d4, I take, he takes, and I play b5 in order to push his bishop back. You know. Giving him two options. He bishop. Yeah, bishop b3 and bishop c2. If I look at the, in the game, he went bishop c2. If I look at right. this position, Prithu, I feel like. White has these beautiful pawns. What have you got in return for it? Well, while it's true that I'm lacking solid control over the center, which is of course being passed on to White, I'm uh, getting an opportunity to develop my pieces really very quick. And uh, as we go on to see the center control that White possesses at the moment is just uh, about very temporary and even if it lasts for a long term it's probably only based on the fact uh, that i'm getting a lot of dynamic dynamic activity in place for it which balances the position in my opinion mm -hmm. okay so d6 you played yeah we probably forgot to mention apart from bishop c2 we have another major line in bishop b3 where i have probably had my most memorable game which i've shown on the channel before against uh, Nikola Djokic. Oh, guys, please, if you get some time, watch this game, Prith, uh, Nikola yeah, so Djokic. Bishop BC and the game went with knight e7. Yeah, yeah. No, I was... Uh, just a second. Maybe there's a small lag. Yeah. Uh, guys, if you get yeah. time, please check this game. Uh, Nikola Djokic, who is white <laughs> against Prithu Gupta. I guarantee you, you won't see a better game in this line with so many sacrifices it just shows prithu's uh, flair in full light uh, like how he played this game but that was with bishop b3 and uh, yeah. in the game bishop c2 knight e7 oh ah, yeah yeah let's go uh, just check a few moves knight e7 knight e7 d5 knight e5 bishop d2 takes takes the queen c5 bishop c3 F6. <laughs> yeah, nice move. D6, knight C6, and this was all that you will get to see on this yeah, video. Please check out this game. Yeah, this game is insane because uh, somehow it looks like Black's bishop is closed, but the way in which uh, Prithu sacrificed his pawns, I think he pushed some B4, then C4. I don't, right. I don't remember exactly the entire game, but I have made a video on it, and it's a fantastic game. Yeah, so not dropping any spoilers ahead for our viewers. Um, we're going to proceed with the current game, which went with Bishop C2. Okay. 
and um, I just continued my normal thing with uh, d6, posing a very minor threat of going bishop g4 in case I'm lucky enough to catch him off guard. And um, he proceeds with h3, yeah. just typical total axis against bishop g4, knight f6. So, so I, I would just like to point out that d4 is being attacked by the knight and the bishop. So if you are able to play your bishop to g4, it just puts more pressure on that point. And so white prevents it exactly. and uh, Prithu just develops his knight. Knight e7 being another major option, which I think uh, Grandmaster Dreve Alexi played, played with black himself, which further on convinced me to take upon this line. Okay. And... Um, well, there's not anything particularly wrong with that as well. I think it's just a slightly, a very slightly inferior position for black, which um, can go about playing for a long time. So you see there's no immediate draws and um, although you're having a slight uh, lag in space advantage, you can just go about playing this position for hours and hours on an end mm -hmm. without any particular um, result in hand. So I th in my opinion, it's just one of those really good options when trying to play for a win with black. Okay. Okay. So instead of knight e7, which is also equally fine, uh, Prithu went knight f6, more active. F6. And, and um, castles. 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 I proceeded with the same, knight c3. Uh, rook e1. Yeah, he played rook Bishop e1, so. b7, knight c3. Uh, I like how, how Black has put both his bishops and fianchettoed them, uh, has has good space in this. I mean, White has the space, but Black has developed all his pieces. Yeah. So, another interesting mention that I would probably like to make at this point was that um, at the time, actually, I, I'm still just checking my reference database again, and um, I only find that there's one single game that's been played from this position. Although we might having uh, we might be having two to three other tra uh, transpositions from varying move orders. So this is a point where I actually like to emphasize about really going very deep into your stuff. So you see, the time I played this ad, there was literally no correspondence game, no engine versus engine game, just the one human game. But I just thought this position was very interesting and just went all about probably studying studying it for a night and at an end without sleeping just delving myself completely into the work order so that really helps in my opinion again wow so you are saying that when you played this game there was only one game that was played right. and you just uh, did your own research and you played it against yeah. uh, your just opponent. playing by my own at let's say just, just trying to play moves by my own at three in the night having a good engine by my side to uh, refer to my mistakes with and I just really like that kind of kind of working atmosphere. In my opinion, it's just the best I can ever ask for. Okay, okay. So let's go. I I want to see Prithu how you break this structure because and how do you gain yeah. counterplay? Because look, this pawn is protected three times. This pawn is protected yeah. twice. I mean, where is your counterplay coming from? So as I previously said, uh, games like these, they tend to proceed very slowly. I mean, it's not as if um, I'm going to be playing exceptionally well and getting a huge breakthrough myself. I mean, of course, um, while I just can't even expect my opponent to make um, big mistakes out of sudden, I just have to rely on very minute inaccuracies that he makes along the ways and try to harness uh, every bit out of them. Okay. And uh, counterplay then naturally proceeds in a slightly inferior position again for my side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so rookie 8? Right. Bishop and, um, g5? Bishop I think g5. he just develops his bishop. h6. Bishop h4. Bishop h4. Yes. And Prithu, you can tell us when is the right moment we can ask certain questions to the viewers, yeah? Sure. Okay. And uh, over here, I proceeded with g5. First, you went knight a5? Yeah, uh, sorry. Knight a5, queen c1, probably. A3. a3, and now g5. 4, queen c1, and g5, yeah. Yes. And he played bishop g3. By the way, there's one question by uh, the one prophet123, who's, a, who's a, I think a strong player. He says, after rookie one, maybe nb4 is good since he can't go bishop b1 
with C5 getting some sort of Benoni structure. Is that, does that make sense, Prithu? Uh, so what exactly was the move order he mentioned? He said here, after rook e1, right. can you go knight b4? And then you can take this bishop and play c5, something like that. Well, now this might not be very safe as he probably has bishop b3 and c5, he takes, takes and goes e5. Okay, okay. Or better said, even a3 just before taking. And I'm probably just very low on options. Mm, mm. And he takes some c5, plays e5, and yes, it's probably not, not yeah, all that good. This knight might just uh, be in trouble. Got it. Okay. Right. Very nice. I, I, guys, if you have some questions like these very interesting please ones, please, please go ahead so that you can clarify your doubts from the expert himself. Uh, a3, knight c4, queen c5, bishop g3. And now uh, here you went c5. Yes, so I, I, I must admit this was all my preparation till now. And uh, this is just around where it ended because, of course, I mean, um, as to convenience, I would recommend people to look to delve further on into the position. But I just thought that uh, this would just be the type of uh, position I would be looking forward to playing against the lower rated back or just outplay him um, in, the, in the long run. Okay, <clears throat> and now I see there is a small threat that you want to take on d4 and then maybe threaten knight h5, attacking the bishop and also the knight. So this uh, again was, I think, a better, um, a better version, a pseudo Benoni version of what uh, of what the gentleman on the chat just mentioned mm. a few minutes ago. Yeah. So your opponent did play d5 and now the game is quite yeah. complex. Uh, right. Uh, just, yeah, I was just hoping I could show you a few more interesting lines from this point onwards. Um, Adarsh Kumar asks, what was the uh, idea? See, Pratham Chess asks, what's the idea of a3? Adarsh Kumar asks, what's the idea of queen c1? <laughs> so both white moves are kind of complicated for everyone to understand why a3 here okay so first of all again um if you just have a very clear look at the position there's literally not much white can do because i mean of course if he tries to strike with something that let's say like e5 it's uh, not going to be without its um disadvantages I'll probably just take on e5 he takes as well. I go queen d1, rook d1. And I analyze this line uh, to the further ahead and it just ends pretty uh, equal. And my opponent, just like me, probably also just wanted to play for a win. And after bishop f3, gf3, knight h5, there's just not much anything anyone can possibly do. Right. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. I, I like how Prithu uh, explains everything calmly. And then speeds up in some lines like he goes bishop f3 gf3 knight h5 and then it's equal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping it's not inconvenient. To no, 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 no. It's it's good. It shows it shows the you know you're trying to slow down uh, and teach everything, but you're also showing your real. So I think it, whenever you go too fast, I'll I'll ask you questions and so you can continue. So a3 is just like uh, in a way a waiting move. I don't know or yeah, stopping it's just b4. Just not a waiting move. And um, also prophylaxis to b4, point yeah. which I miss. Yeah. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. after a3, knight c4, I think queen c1 is obvious. Yeah, you are defending uh, b2 and also keeping an eye on perhaps this pawn here. Yeah, because uh, another minor detail, probably important to mention, would be that after b3, I probably just pick up the pawn on a3 and rook a3, b4, it's um, nice. not go for white as nice. I. He drops the knight on c3 and along with which the pawn on e4 and the moves to come. Very nice. Okay, this is very good. So, you know, guys, when you ask questions and Prithu responds, I think it helps us to understand the opening better. Okay, queen c1, g5, c5, d5. And now uh, knight h5, bishop h2. Yeah. 
So over here, maybe we could just have a very small trivia for the Fantastic. forget. Fantastic. So guys, time to wake up. All those who are just watching this video, try to think what is the move that black can play here? What did Prithu do? You see, your knights are nicely posted. Uh, bishops are also okay, maybe. How should black continue here? Okay, one more question by Ayush Krishna is, is knight into g5 possible after g5 move? Like giving a piece yeah. for two pawns? I'm, I'm very happy, my friend, you mentioned that because that was one of the lines I was really looking forward to showing. Okay, should we the, um, should we go there first or let's wait for uh, someone? Maybe to... we could wait for viewers and I could just recollect my analysis. Okay. Meanwhile. So meanwhile, uh, we'll go back to that g5 position, Ayush, uh, until then. Uh, let's have a look at here. What is black's best move? Okay. Um, <clears throat> also, one thing I'd probably suggest ask you to suggest a plan rather than a particular move because it's uh, not the kind of one move combination, but rather an elaborate plan, which uh, I worked upon starting from this position. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gaurang B says queen a5 with the idea of knight b2. Adit Bhatia also says the same thing. Chess improvement says knight into b2. Uh, Pegizer says knight a3. If rook takes, then b4. If pawn takes, then bishop into c3. Um, chess Arco says f5. Interesting. Sugata Bose yeah. says b4. Pratham Chess says f5. A lot of uh, interesting suggestions. Yeah, f5, knight b2, knight a3, playing on both sides of the board. Yes, so indeed these were all the options I um, looked upon during the game itself because you just can't let go of any one in particular. So starting with um, the obvious, uh, namely knight a3. I probably just drop a piece after rook a3, b4 and rook b3. Ooh. Since uh, bishop's print. Yeah. My God, this is <laughs> this is uh, how you lose games. Yeah, if you are not alert, you want to yeah. win a piece, but you have to be a little bit careful over there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the next, namely knight b2. So he takes on b2, and probably um, all the people who suggested knight b2 was with the intention of going queen a5. But after queen a5, you obviously attacking the knight. He has e5, and your bishop's blocked. Mm. And you just drop peace all over again. Yeah. By the way, uh, another suggestion which is from a few people, Dynamic Chess, there's also Matipulator uh, and uh, Vivek Padman is Knight F4 in this position. They are saying let's give up a pawn, but I don't know. Yes, indeed one of the options I again considered, but uh, what really kind of... Um, wanted me not to go into this was knight d2. Mm. You are exchanging this active knight? Yes. And after takes, and it's takes... probably all, not all that bad as well, but yes, the position that I visualized post uh, the other option was all the more convincing. And just to elaborate uh, a few words on this as well, I probably continue with bishop e5. And um, he goes something like, I, th I think I did analyze this, was bishop d1 over here, right? You analyzed this at home? Yes, oh. I was analyzing this with the computer, with the idea of g3 on the next move. And once I take on h3, you go king g2. So my knight's kind of trapped. But why to go bishop d1? Why not play it directly? Uh, if you go directly, I, I'm afraid I have g4 over there. Ooh. And then, so basic, basically, Bishop D1 stops this move. Yes, we could probably avoid that little move and exclamation mark too. Bishop D1, yeah? Right. Okay, brilliant. Very nice. Okay, so... Um, Queen A5 was also another suggestion by a lot of the viewers. They were thinking yeah. like, take on B2, take on C3 next. Yeah, indeed convincing, but over here you have to, I mean, as I said, it's just the little details that you have to be careful about in this position. And here is the much afraid blow, namely e5. Mm. 
So it basically blocks your bishop, and although he's dropping the pawn, he could probably continue with something like, let's say, yeah, take on e five. Take on e five. One minute. You're taking with the knight. Yeah. Okay. So take with sorry. I guess we take, take back with the, with the knight. knight. I take again. And I take with the pawn, take perhaps. With, with the pawn, and now he just has this very nice aesthetic diagonal for his bishop out there. Yeah, agreed. And a really nice and decent pass pawn on the d file, not to forget. Um, so he probably just proceeds with d6, and uh, you see there isn't any immediate thing I can do in order to like let's say reduce the activity on the bishop or let's say even capture that pawn. My knight is out of play. My bishop on g7 isn't doing great either. So this is just the kind of position we would uh, like to be slightly careful of. Mm. Not all that dangerous per se, but it's just these small details that um, would help you a lot if you tend to avoid. Okay, brilliant. By the way, one more question uh, is that after knight, you said knight f4, knight d2. Everyone is saying not take on d2, but come back knight e5. In this position, right? Makes sense. Of course, yes. but over here, well, yeah, seems pretty interesting as well. Because also it's now I'm jumping to d3. Yes, of course. Wow. Okay, I think I saw something over here. Maybe it was bishop f4, gf4. Take on f4. Take on f4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this actually seems pretty good as well for black. Forgot to mention this, yeah. Mm. So, maybe maybe knight f4 is not a bad idea here. Sure. Yes, now I probably remember. I was I was thinking of bishop f4, gf4, queen f4. And um, knight into b2 probably and then e5. So this was really frightening for me over the board at least. Okay. Because now the bishops again unleashed and that's an absolute monster white has on c2 and uh, he could probably go queen f5 and blacks just probably run out of good options at the moment. So I think in general you guys when you play this opening you have to be very careful about when the e5 it's break is coming in. Right. Okay. So, I mean, as I said, it's just those minute details that will help you a lot in the long run if you pay um, attention to over the board. Hmm. Right. Okay. Let's... So instead, I went for a slightly elaborate strategic plan um, based on the move of Bishop C8. I think someone, Raman Chandrakar had mentioned this move, Bishop C8. Uh, is your plan to go F5 next? I think I'd probably deem this a multi-purpose move because uh, on one hand, the main purpose of bringing, of, of maneuvering the bishop to c8 is based on the fact that it's not uh, doing much work on b7. It just accomplished what it had to do, which was to provide initial activity and threat on the pawn on e4. And now since it served its purpose, it would be best placed in that diagonal where I also would be provided the opportunity of initially playing g4 and f5, as you mentioned, as it even later happened in the game. And um, if he plans to go a4, I can just place my bishop on d7 just to keep a very simple check on the tension over there. Because b4 is not something I would enthusiastically want to do. Okay. Okay. Harjap Singh also said it. Harjap, well done. Uh, by the way, Nishant Music uh, suggested that here, when you went knight a5, yeah. oh yeah, got it. Uh, b3 instead of a3 but I think the problem is b4 and you lose the pawn after g5 I think so exactly you can't play that anyway got it uh, queen c1 g5 c5 knight h5 bishop c8 and white played bishop d3 well as the viewers could just excuse me for a second I'll just rush back to the watch room and sure sure, right back. sure please do so uh, and uh, we'll wait for you we'll pr get some questions for you while you are gone sure. okay so prithu just uh is taking a short break uh, meanwhile guys <clears throat> how are you enjoying this session if you have any questions about this these uh this opening please let us know also if you have some uh questions about rai lopez or spanish in general i we would appreciate this i think 
the general Q and A with Prithu we can do later, but it's more important to learn this system. Mm. The one prophet one two three gives a very nice idea. He says now rook a seven to e seven is also possible. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, as Ayush Krishna said here, what about knight into g five? And so we should look at this because kind of uh, is two pieces for a two pawns for a piece. But I I feel with the bishop on g seven the king is pretty safe. Let's see what Prithu has to say. Gaurang B says Queen A5 instead of uh, here Queen A5 and uh, if E5 which Prithu mentioned then DE B3 okay not B3 uh, I think oh okay B3 hmm. But maybe not b3 no here something else okay prithu is back prithu is back yeah. cool um so where are we uh yeah two two things um that we want to look at first is the move that we were discussing here, knight into g5, as we had promised to look yeah. at, takes, takes, bishop g5. Very critical option indeed, for uh, trying to essay this over the board. Okay. And now here, I mean, you take with uh, the bishop on g5, I can just go c5, and there isn't much of danger at all. I mean, you just can't go e5, and I'm threatening to take on d4 as well. Yeah, yeah e5 well, is but... just losing a pawn. Cool. Uh, so can't do that and otherwise yeah you can't so basically it looks scary but once you just carefully calculate you'll realize that it's not very dangerous of course okay so bishop so the sorry yeah. one more question that uh, people had is that here if queen a5 e5 we looked at knight into e5, but what about d into e5? d into e5, you just simply go knight d2. That's the important point to consider. Knight d2, okay. I mean, I think I even looked at this with the machine after the game, and it probably gave black a slight advantage. But to be honest, these are game the type of things I would principally avoid over the board if I'm not promised a huge advantage. That is. But what about knight d6? Just coming back. Okay, I mean, I'll go knight e4. Knight e4, okay. And basically, uh, after take, maybe bishop takes. And here is right. a case where this square is weak uh, and the bishop is beautifully placed. And once again, this pawn sacrifice works quite well for black, uh, for white, because this bishop is closed in. Of course. Okay. All right, so let's uh, go to the game and cover it. So bishop c8, bishop d3. Now you went knight e5. He took. Takes, takes, takes and takes. all this is pretty much post, I think. I think and taking on e5 three. with a piece is important so that uh, he doesn't get a passer. And also you have control on the dark yeah. squares. Queen d2. Yeah, it just gives the... Uh, Really nice control to me on the e5 square, the f4 square, squares, which, um, as we'll see, of course, proved to be really critical along the way. Okay, so knight f4. Now, all the dark squares are in black's control, which I yeah. really like. Uh, bishop f1, yes. Um, so now I just go queen f6 in order to double, in order to possibly double my rook, whereas having my queen on, um, in play as well. Nice. Nice. So rook e3. Now this was again a move I liked by his side because now he's trying to go rook f3 and g3 in order to um, uh, kick that much um, dangerous knight on f4. Okay. So you went uh, normal bishop d7. He went rook f3. Rook f3. Queen g7. Simple prophylaxis to g3. Yeah. D4. And uh, look at it. You can't go g3 yet because now knight into h3, the pawn is lose lost because the bishop also controls it. 
so yeah. b4 was played b4. in the game rook c8 i would have liked to go rook e8 right away but i just felt rook c8 was a bit more precise was a tad more precise as i had probably like to take with the rook e when if uh, he takes on c5 giving me another active c file yeah so and now at times i would even like to double my rook on the c files by bringing my rook back to e8 and c8 which would pro- offer me very promising play like this yeah yeah okay and this was indeed what my next move was based on rook e8 <laughs> nice nice how you changed your plans from e file to the c file yeah so i think it's just very important to go along with the flow of play again because now i just sense that he would probably be getting some opportunity how um, i mean if i double the rooks on the e file namely getting a passer which might not be all that dangerous but of course it's something i would like to prevent and would also enable me to have the game in my control for a longer time so i just simply go rook e8 and uh, rook e3 rook e3 rook and now you doubled knight e2 yeah. and you played knight e2 and now c4 because now i want to get my knight to d3 on the next move after doubling my rooks on the c file interesting uh can he go knight d4 now knight d4 fails to knight d3 ooh smart 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 attacking the rook and if you take queen into d4 and this is pinned and you win a piece nice oh okay maybe not win no, a piece obviously. maybe not win a piece but at least it's a you can actually take with the rook on d3 and i'm probably dropping a piece Ooh. myself yeah i just go rook c8 first <laughs> okay yeah uh, i go rook c8 first and then knight d3 on the next move and there isn't much you can do to prevent that sorry just let me show the viewers yeah this way you would lose a piece so knight d3 is not is too soon but knight d4 you first play rook c8 and then yeah. you are threatening knight d3 and this knight doesn't have many good squares to go because they are all controlled by this bishop and queen c3 is maybe good prophylaxis but now is where the bishop on d7 really comes into play with f5 f and i just blow the center apart really yes but what if we take oh you have knight into d5 right smart 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 And what if he goes g3? I just take on e4 because he can't take on f4 because of g into f1 and he <laughs> drops the rook. Oh, he's prepared for all. You know tricks. that I'm just looking at every minute minute detail and every placement of pawn pieces everything in the position. That just makes your game a lot more fun and interesting while you're planning your moves and playing them so on. Yeah, absolutely. So f5 uh, here in the game he played rook c c3. Rook c3. Again, just trying to um, hold that pawn for a moment, and now it's probably where our viewers could get another good trivia. <laughs> okay, guys, guys, black to move. Prithu's opponent is trying to stop all his ideas. Like Prithu tried to double on the c file, get some play going there. He blocked it. So now, what do you do? How do you continue in this position? So it's black to play. black to move in this position i think uh, this game uh, prithu also has some life lessons yeah being flexible and changing as per the right. situations in life change like if you want to get x but life turns around then you try to go for y absolutely <laughs> okay we have uh, Uh, Ayush Krishna very nice Ayush what you are trying to say maybe your notations are wrong but your idea is correct uh, Smitha passes f5 I am not sure about f5 maybe just e into f5 looks strong uh, yes. Chayana Karmakar also says f5 Guys think 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 you need to be flexible Soham Naya says bishop into h3. No, come on, Soham. That's just a piece blunder. Chess Arco. A- everyone who says f5 here, White just takes on f5. I don't think you have sufficient 
play for that uh, giving up yeah. that pawn uh, this being one of the options that honestly i considered on the board but, but just dropped after seeing the line after es5 rook e3 rook e3 and um i don't think black has enough um to probably increase his advantage um instead i, I felt that uh, the move i played for accommodate my f5 strike in the future as well while providing more pressure in the meanwhile yeah all those who mentioned here the move bishop c8 kudos to you because prithu is a confusing opponent yeah he wanted to double on the c file now he's going on the e file because everything is blocked here so now yes. we we'll... the situation demands me to put pressure on the e4 pawn brilliant so knight d4 he jumped to e7 and now attacking e4 so opponent played f3 <laughs> and now, now again, i just make a small waiting move for bishop d7 yeah, i mean yeah. i could have strike with f5 immediately but i just want to see what he does and provide him one more scope for making an error yeah i like this bishop this guy is not a bishop it's like a pawn yeah it went one yeah. square one square one square one square one square it's just moving in one squares but is making a lot of impact on the game also useful to mention as good prophylaxis to knight e6 which could probably be slightly troubles yeah of course so he went king h2 yeah and now comes the much loved move namely f5 yeah right time this is the right time to play it but uh, doesn't it lose a pawn yes and this and this could an another we uh, this could be another minor puzzle probably uh, so guys calculate here after knight into f5 what did prithu have in mind here after knight into f5 i'm very interested to see how prithu managed to confuse oh my god this is going to be interesting wow wow what do you do calculate deeply okay there is one question what about knight f4 g f4 rook g3 after bishop c8 because we also have queen at 6 no i didn't yeah. i didn't did it work prithu oh uh, yes it probably does work and um here another thing be useful to mention yeah because he's picking up my queen in the process and uh, this time my friend was another very interesting line as pointed out by the computer so i i take he takes and now i go c3 he takes my he uh, goes queen into h6 which is again a very important detail to mention because uh, if he picks up my queen i just simply go king g7 and um, my pawn just claims the victory so queen into h6 looks uh, dangerous yes and now i pick up the guy on g3 he takes c2 and now just when i'd probably be happy celebrating the win he strikes back with queen g5 and well here's probably trying time for another small trivia i guess oh wow after king f8 queen at 6 king e7 yeah it seems like black is winning mm -hmm. because as e5 and now it's probably him on the roll e5 wow what a move what a move so basically if you make a queen this yeah, is a checkmate with queen d6 and But if, if i go d into e5 that just probably fails to d6 check yeah and king d7 d c7 and i'm not able to promote a queen as a queen keeping the check on the square of c1 wow so this actually works yeah this entire idea with knight into f4 g into f4 but it's only good for a draw yes and queen f6 being a very important detail that you have to spot and that's probably the first step of the task and the second being the much elusive move e5 yeah so basically Without... i think prithu would go king h8 and then maybe it's just a draw like i so... mean if i were to be very honest with the viewers i'd probably end up going king e7 and e5 being an equally difficult move to spot would probably remain hidden until we 
of course, come back uh, to the comfort zones of our home <laughs> and check the game with the mouse, with the engine. Yeah, E5, I don't think uh, it's very easy to spot while going into that line knight into F4, like five moves before. So, yeah, what he played, Yansa, was very natural. He went like F3, Prithu struck with F5, and the question was knight into F5, bishop into F5, E into F5. And what did Prithu have in mind here? Uh, Prithu, can you tell us? Right. So now, I mean, if I were to speak of it in a slightly descriptive manner, I'd just say it's oh. probably, I mean, naturally forced to make a, a couple of exchanges on square of e3, ending with him taking with the queen. And Actually, now... uh, Prithu, two of the viewers have got this move. One, they wrote the entire line, Neev Patel and Ayush Krishna. Well done, guys. That's amazing. Because now comes the move without which his whole line would probably yield nothing, namely Queen E5. What a hidden move. Right. So now my point is that if he tries to take on E5, I'm just winning the bishop ending because the knight bishop endgame because of my C4 pawn and his bishop isn't able to escape in time. For example, we make some moves, namely G3, I go yes. C3, E6, and I play C2. This is the very crucial point that now the bishop can't come to d3 to stop the pawn. So after gf4, you go c2 and you make a queen. Brilliant, Prithu. Brilliant. What? What calculation? Yeah, so... <laughs> people, people are saying in the chat, I've had so much water after watching Prithu. I think... <laughs> <laughs> well, I... It's important to keep yourself hydrated. Another very important thing to probably gain yourself some more stamina over the board. Yeah, keep yourself hi well hydrated. So queen into e5, d into e5, and that's winning. So Yansa actually just tried to create some play with queen a7, uh, but Prithu had it all under control. Check. Discovered. d3, knight e3. And he took on f5 and now uh, g3 is hanging. Uh, and there could be a few checks, but once the king goes to g6, the checks yeah. end. And then this pawn is queening here uh, this knight. What a game, Prithu. Beautiful. Thank you. I think a lot to be learnt from this entire thing. If you had to summarize this game, how would it be? Okay, so firstly, I wasn't in a very good situation at all as for the tournament. I mean, I was having a disastrous tournament, as I said, and while a win probably won't do me much, I just felt that it would probably really boost up my spirits. And of course, you just need to come back from disastrous situations because it's not possible to have everything your way all the time. So in view of that, I picked up a line that it helped me um, keep my options with a win uh, for a win with the black pieces alive. Mm. Uh, namely the G6 Spanish and um, I paid a lot of attention to studying every minute detail in this opening beforehand. I liked the middle game it subsequently corresponded to and again pro knowing all the theory and engine evaluations in the world is worthless unless until you don't have a good feel for the kind of position we got around move number 17. Right. Uh, as one prophet 123 says the whole line is very nice to play for a win. I also felt so. You know, the position is imbalanced. Oh. Uh, let me just tell you uh, small things that we uh, discussed. D4 was analyzed uh, here. Also, C3 uh, was the main move that we looked at. And then after that, very important was the fact that you play like... Give white this strong center but you counter punch it so knight a5 threatening knight c4 you push c5 uh, if the bishop comes here you push h6 g5 jump with your knight to h5 so basically it's like you create an imbalance in the position and that's how you can outplay your weaker opponent it's not easy to play by the way with black because you have to be very alert as was shown in this very position by prithu that uh, here this was the key moment where if you were a little bit careless and you went with queen a5, then white could strike in the center and then the tables could turn. So he was very careful. He played his bishop to c8 and then he uh, got this control on the dark squares. I really like this entire concept with 
queen f6 knight f4 bishop d7 rook e8 this was the plan but suddenly he spotted that hey look there can be now with b4 things have changed i can play on the c file and then he got rook c8 doubled his <laughs> was planning to double on c file and suddenly he shifted to the e file i think uh, in the chat someone wrote prithu is a genius and yeah well uh, you Thank can't you. you can't really uh, become a gm at the age of 15 also uh, achieve 1300 elo points gain without being such a great player and fantastic game prithu uh, really enjoyed it what about next game? Which one shall we look at? Next is going to be one with fight uh, against an Israeli GM named uh, Dan Zola from the Bale 2018. Okay, so this is going to be white now. Okay, exciting. Yeah. First, we learn something with black and now we go to white. So no one feels left out. White. Yes, I just don't want the viewers to feel alienated. And... Um, this, I think, was probably a good idea to incorporate um, lots of knowledge from both the colors into one single video. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, uh, is there some book about G6 line, Prithu? Um, so I'm actually not aware about this because I just prepared it with the help of a number of um, engine correspondents human games along with um, some analysis by myself and my telecom friend of course mm -hmm. okay so Prithu prepared it with the engines and his own analysis Pranav Mehta says Il eloquent lad all the best man uh, Vaibhav Rajput says does Prithu prefer open tournaments or closed ones um, I think I've always had a much better liking for closed um uh, so for open tournaments in fact i've only played one closed tournament till date and that was when i was in pursuit of i am no okay okay so more focus on has been on uh open tournaments but of course yeah okay let's begin with this game prithu versus dan solar i'm excited i'm going to get white this time on our side e4 e5 sure. knight f3 knight c and whenever this bishop comes to b5 i feel like excited you know it's like years of history of chess <laughs> is on your side you're playing the spanish opening which is such a such a brilliant opening okay anyway <laughs> maybe it's just me who feels excited <laughs> a6 no, i think it's probably the case with everyone you just feel uh, a bit of ultra luxury and royalty while making that move because and probably also a tad bit of pressure because you've got years of legendary legacy to um, carry yeah yeah absolutely by the way is your opponent a gm dan zoller oh uh, yeah he was a gm and he was an israeli gm he is a gm and his rating was 2506 and prithu at that point was an im with uh, 2436 rating. Uh, another interesting detail to mention would probably be that this was a must win situation for me to make my second GM norm. Oh, so this is a must win and he again goes for the right. Roy Lopez. Uh, by the way, Prithu, uh, you would would you ever consider playing this exchange Roy Lopez? Does it make sense to you? Another very interesting line, but um, I just feel like um, it's something that doesn't pose me all that much problem with black when i'm uh, i mean as i mentioned i'm uh, playing i'm i'm playing the sign with, with with both of either colors since a long time and uh, it's just uh, one of those openings that would probably make me rack my head before i go to sleep the next day thinking about the fact that my opponent might play this so i um, try not to play it for the while with with the white pieces but now that you've mentioned it who knows Tell me Might something, if your opponent castles, what would be your recommendation for black players here? Sure. So I think there are many great um, books written on this line for either side. And um, of course, I studied a number of options, namely Bishop G4, F6. And another interesting line, this little secret of mine that I'm going to share is the line uh, with Queen F6. Ooh. Nice. Thank you for sharing this secret. But what about d4? This looks scary. Bishop is coming out to g5. d4, I'm just going to take on d4. Okay. And um, yeah, I, I guess you mentioned bishop g5, yeah. queen g6. Doesn't this look scary? Like queen d6. Queen d6. I'm sorry. I've 
Doesn't this look scary? Like white has castle, has the knight out, bishop out. You are just playing with your queen. Yes, I think that's the fun of it because if we just go uh, scroll two moves back, I have the standard options of bishop g4 and f6 that would yield me a very safe and comfortable game. But here's the thing where I just want to mess with my opponent's head a bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so takes takes. Which of course and... might not account for much, but at the same time, it's just going to wipe that little energy off his head. That's hopefully going to help you in the long run. Again. Okay. So guys, if your opponent plays the exchange variation in the Ruy Lopez. Consider messing with his head with Queen F6 as Prithu mentions and try to look at these yeah. lines. Uh, it's an interesting concept. Uh, by the way, Anit, Anit Chess is here and he says, I was at the BL festival. He was playing there, I think in the open event and he saw you. Right, I remember that. Do you know him? Yes, of course. He's a good friend. Oh, Anit is a good friend. By the way, guys, Anit uh, also men uh, maintains a very good instagram page uh, called women's chess world is that right uh, and i think uh, you guys can check it out he there's a lot of promotion related to women players and i i like it especially nice page okay so knight f6 main move castles and now uh, bishop, bishop e7 which is the closed Ruy lopez rookie one b5 bishop b3 d6 and I must. Um, yes, go on. Sorry, Prithu. Yeah. So this is, uh, I mean, this is all pretty standard stuff. And I knew that he'd probably be shuffling between the main Shigur and all the burden, uh, sorry, all the, all the brayers. So uh, my coach at the time, Michael Royce, uh, suggested me an interesting idea, which I tended to essay in the game and we'll be having a look at. Okay. So this was suggested by Michael Royce, who is actually a right. very well-known theoretician who's written book on the Nimzo Indian for uh, quality chess and this is something which Prithu is going to talk about. By the way Prithu, Sachin Agni says, when I see Roy Lopez, I fear all the historic lines which I need to know before choosing the opening. So they are really scared to play okay. this opening. How do you, how do you uh, handle it? So from what I could decide for from the statement, uh... Uh, made by this friend of ours was that he is possibly afraid to study a lot of theory which of course can be very hectic and uh, this was the same take i had which is the, which is why i didn't study this for a very long time um, until i became an im after which i mean of course i had a coach who um, slowly broke it down for me along with a lot of study work that i did myself and once you probably get a slight hang of how the game proceeds and um, play some games yourself in order to get a good feel or hang of the line, it just starts to become really comfortable because um, it's virtually impossible for, let's say, even um, Carlson or Caruana to learn all the theory in um, a month or two. It, it takes years and years of uh, playing games, following correspondence games, working with the best engines and so on. Okay, so basically what Prithu says is that it will take you time. So better to start soon so that you can anyway exactly. learn. Uh, also, I, I feel like it's sometimes learning main lines is like trying to jump into the swimming pool. So like when you are outside the pool, you're always scared. Oh, what if I drown? What if I drown? But once you jump inside, you start, I mean, someone should be there to save you. But once you go in, it's more like you start for your survival. So once you start playing, you, are, uh, you learn much faster. So I think you can just try it out and maybe you will learn uh, quite quickly. Yeah. By the way, uh, Prithu, Digant Patil says, basic question, why help black expand on the queen side with tempo? Like here, you go bishop b5, then you he goes and pushes you with a4, a6, then he pushes you with b5. Why to help him expand? Um... Well, this is, of course, a uh, very standard and logical theory. I mean, you, um, uh, he, he develops on his own by pushing a bishop back and you have a well-placed bishop on b3 and uh, would potentially want to open up the center with c3, d4, probably bring the bishop to c2 in order to proceed with b4 and e4. 
So, I mean, it's just a lot of uh, finesses that vary from one line to the other and uh, would probably be uh, not very useful to mention in um, particular with respect to this very position. Okay. So, uh, D6 and now the main threat is Knight A5 to pick up this Bishop because now the E5 pawn is protected. Earlier, if you went Knight A5 here, then Knight into E5 would just drop a pawn. So, D6 is a solid move. By the way, a super chat by Anit Chess who says, I'm enjoying the stream and I'm learning a lot. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Anit. My pleasure. Okay, so C3, making a luft for the bishop to drop back on C2. Castles and now H3 because you want to play D4, but bishop G4 is an irritating line. So white first stops uh, bishop G4 and now, oh, he plays the brayer. Wow, you know, Prithu, Brayer is my one of favorite lines with black. Yes, exactly. I mean, I think all all the lines that branch from the royal face are really very instructive, deep, and just help you get a better understanding of the game rather than just learning theory of a particular line in general. I mean, my chess particularly really improved just from making the little moves around the board while uh, trying to exit this line from either side. Right. Okay. So just for the viewers, knight a5 here is the Chigorin system. Uh, like this, it progresses. You can have a look at it. But today we will be looking at this Brayer because the point is after d4, as happened in the game, you put your knight on d7, then you put your bishop on b7, keep your pawn free so that later on you can play c5. That's the idea of Brayer. Very hyper modern opening. Right. <clears throat> so now, just so that I could get some time for another break, I would probably give a small, a very um, psychology-based review to the okay. viewers that uh, they could probably enjoy. So I was in a must-win situation and I could probably proceed with the standard stuff, uh, namely Knight D2 and so on, but I just chose some other lines that it helped me uh, increase my chances of surprising him further on. Um, adding to some chances of the much elusive win that I was trying to chase at this point of time. Okay, so the the normal way to play this line is knight d2, bishop b7, bishop c2, rook e8, knight f1, bishop f8, knight g3. But what Prithu played in this position over here is not knight d2, he tried to surprise his opponent. So what move would you suggest here? Prithu has just gone uh, for a while. So, till he comes back, what do you think can white play here? Devar Srivastava asks, I play d4 so I can avoid tactics. Is that a good idea? Devar, uh, I played d4 for my entire career. Then I shifted to c4, knight f3. It's just what you feel like playing. Whatever you like, you can choose that. But I believe that having knowledge about uh, e4, Rui Lopez will not hurt you in general. So, try to learn. You will learn something new. Okay, Chess Arco says Bishop E3. Okay, Uday, Uday Paideti says Bishop G5. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Ayush Krishna says H4. Guys, come on. H4 just weakens the G4 square. I wouldn't play H4 here. Come on, come up with some yeah. interesting move. Amit Panchal says Fab Fab's 3D Fabiano Caruana's 3 DVDs on Rai Lopez is an excellent tool for Rui Lopez. As suggested, playing, analyzing, looking at latest games is important. Would you would you have you also studied uh, Caruana's 3 DVDs on Rai Lopez, Pritu? Yeah, I mean of course. Um, that was literally. I think I, 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 I might have even been one of the first people to buy them as soon as they were launched in the market. Okay. Because any piece of information that is shared by one of the leading experts or better said the world's top players on an opening he specializes is something not to be missed. But um, I think if the DVD was released uh, a couple of months after this game took place, to be fair. Okay, so I will put the link of that DVD. You can get it from Chessbase India shop uh, and uh, I'll put it in the description later. Uh, by the way, some suggestions here are knight d2, but that's the normal move. Bishop c2 is one. a4 is suggested by uh, dynamic chess. 
C4 mm -hmm. by Vivek, uh, Bishop G5. Yeah, so C4 is indeed the move I chose. C4, okay, that's what you played. Tell us what no, is the I'm... idea of this move. So, I mean, as I just mentioned, knight d2 is, of course, the main line, and there's uh, nothing bad with playing it. I mean, you just get a long, stable game with um, good chances of both sides, and a long, um, strategical game ensues. But over here, I was just looking for something more direct, that it uh, yield me slight, slight more chances of uh, win, and probably catching him off guard. Because c4, if you just look at it from behind your screen, it might not uh, seem all that dangerous. Because, I mean, of course, the engine gives um, a turbulent evaluation, maybe just taking out 0, 0.00. And uh, now there are a lot of great games to probably base your analysis on. But again, uh, something more important to mention was that at the time when I played this, there weren't many games at all. And um, again, the surprise element, it really works. Mm. So, uh, would you say that C4's main idea is to allow the knight to develop on C3? Yes, because C3 is, of course, um, well, uh, I mean, the best spot for the knight to develop on. Okay, okay. So, let's see what he did. He played C6. Um, would, you, nice would you say B4 stopping the knight from coming to C3 is a good move? Yes, of course. That's a uh, good prophylaxis, and I think this has even been played in a couple of games. Um, and the lines go proceed with C5 and... Um, Sorry, well, C5? Yes, C5 oh. is an important move over here. Wow, wow. Because if you take the D4 pawn, I take the pawn in D6 with a slightly better position because you can't take with the bishop due to E5 and C D6, knight D4 leaves the weakened pawn in D6. And if you take on c5, I just take the pawn on e5. Very interesting. Very interesting. So if you take here, I can take here. Got it. Okay, so c6 is like trying to hold on to the structure. Right. Uh, and uh, you continued with your plan, knight c3. Yes. Not to my... Well, uh, a3 and queen c2 are another um, good moves over here that... Uh, uh, constitute a decently big part of the theory as well. Okay. And uh, they could have been tried as well, but I just flagged uh, knight c3 a little better. So the game proceeded with knight c3, b4. And here's where. Um, um, One more trivia? Um, well, this could be a trivia, although it would be slightly unfair uh, for the viewers as I had all the stuff analyzed and without it, it probably would be the most um, unobvious move to get on the board. Really? But yeah, okay. Let's see, white to play. Prithu has it all analyzed. I'm inspired by Prithu's work, work ethic actually. Whenever he plays something, he has things figured out. He knows what he's doing. And I think it's very important. One of the reasons why he improved so quickly is because he worked a lot on chess. That is very important. Okay, so white to move. What are your suggestions here for white? Ha, chess champion says knight b1. Uh, by the way, goblet fire asks, what about c5 here instead of knight c3? Uh, well, c5 I think probably isn't all that effective right now because I could just take on d4. C takes d4. Oh, sorry, c takes uh, d6. No. I'm, I'm sorry. Just, yeah, here sorry. you might lose a piece, no? Right, of course. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, C5 didn't, wasn't one of the options I'd consider, to be honest. And, um, Maybe Queen C7 makes sense now because of the C6 C7, move? Right, because you have to move C6. Exactly. Yeah, and now after CD, you have Bishop D6. D6, D6, D6 and, D5 and Knight D5. Uh, and this might be a fine position for you. Of course. Uh, so that's why knight c3 and after b4 uh, a lot of people say knight a4 in the chat some people have mentioned knight b1 with the idea of knight d2 and there's also someone who said knight e2 and one more option is d into e5 yes i mean indeed all of them are pretty natural knight a4 is also one of the main line but 
as I said, I have to be well on track. Whereas just try to trick him a little bit since the situation demands um, a very direct, direct win from me. So I indeed chose the very confusing move in the form knight e2. Knight e2. Okay, and so you are giving up the pawn on e4. I think if he doesn't take, then you would be very happy to right. put your knight on g3. Yes, and um, so he took. Uh, so knight e4, and here comes another one of his move, courtesy of my trainer Michael Royce and um, the engines, of course, queen c2. Ooh, attacking the knight, but I don't see what is the problem. I could play f5. I could even go back yes. with my knight. So what's the problem? So I think f5 uh, at the time had only been played in one game. Um, and that was the only game that existed after queen c2. It was between uh, Nils Grandelis and Basim Amin. Oh, our Breyer expert, and Basim Amin, who had been on this channel. Right. He's played this already. Okay. Yes, so he he actually faced defeat after c5, d5, and bishop e3. Another very um, computerized move. Prithu, tell me what's happening. What after f4? After f4, I pick up the knight on e4 with the queen. There's a pin. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is hanging. And if I take your bishop? I just take on d5 with the bishop now myself Ooh. because I'm picking up the rook. Oh man. Check and you lose the rook. Wow. Otherwise, uh, there is trouble with uh, you taking here. Yeah? Yes. And if I if you take the pawn on d4, I just take with one of the knights and um, well, on the next moves, I'm threatening taking on c6. I even have knight e6 and even knight f5 to top top them all because I'm taking on uh, e4 with the queen if you take with the rook. Yeah, yeah. So all of this just um, makes it a very messy situation for my open and if he's unprepared over the board. Got it. So I think the game continued with king h8, knight e5, knight e5, d5, bishop h4, g3. Sorry, king h8? Knight e5. Yeah. Takes, takes. Bishop h4, g3. Bishop g5, takes, takes, h4. And I think white has a very pleasant position. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm just. Right. I could place my on f4 or d4. And I'm even going to have f3 soon enough in order to kick the knight from e4. And, well, it's just the, this is the type of position you'd like to play with the white pieces when while aiming for a win. Got it. Okay, so in the game, your opponent didn't play f5 here, which is uh, a game to look at is Nils Grandelius and Basim Amin. He played here knight g5. Uh, what about knight um, f6 here? So knight f6 again is uh, probably again a very natural move yes. and uh, one that I looked at. So I just continue with knight g3. So you just give up a pawn just like that? Yes, but I'm going to regain it soon enough because uh, if you take on d4, I just take with the knight and there's uh, virtually no way in which you're going to you're going to be saving um, the c6 pawn. Yeah, because bishop b7 maybe just what knight knight f5 dfi or knight gfi, I don't know which knight to play. Yes, I think both of them should be fine. Pretty yeah. Rook e8 and bishop f4. And look at this. Look at your pieces. So beautifully placed. The other rook is coming in. I don't think black is happy with his pieces here. Uh, so one more question is. What happens to ndf6? But I think that loses a pawn. Yeah on e5. ndf6 I think I'll just take on e5. Take take and knight e5 right okay so queen c2 he went in g5 okay i think it's pretty natural after all and i just take with the bishop and rook d1 ah taking with the bishop is nice because after bishop takes rook d1 you get all your pieces into the game and also there's always this uh, tension on the g5 square right 
he went bishop f6 yes so bishop f6 i i guess uh, prithu i know what you would do here you would go knight g3 and you are like i don't care i am a pawn down i have play with uh, all my pieces in the game i think it's actually um not that i would always appreciate myself and my ideology in particular it's a pretty cool mindset to keep and um, you're in that under that kind of pressure where you the situation demands something less than a win right right uh by the way uh yeah okay ng3 so this was a must win situation for prithu and he's a pawn down if he wins he gets closer to his gm norm or you get the gm norm right i it was like uh, i wasn't sure i, I just feel that i had to win this game without which i would virtually be having no chances of the norm but um, and i actually thought that i would be making it both to win but i just had to make another draw post this okay so basically this was critical to win and he's already a pawn down and his opponent picks up another pawn here Right. So takes. So knight e4, bishop d4, rook d4, knight c5, and now it's just the fate of the d6 pawn that tells it all. Yeah. So should I double on the d file? That looks very natural to me. So, so indeed, I went queen d2. Okay, you took. And at this point, I I think I was pretty satisfied with my position and the fact that uh, my little piece of analysis had worked wonders so far. Is would you say this position is better for white? Yes, I think it's um, it's probably slightly better in the engine, so it's probably just somewhere ranging between zero point three or zero point six. But it's again, so just the type of position I would hold on to and play for hours hours on an end and just try to squeeze the pawn point out of nowhere. Okay, so he played rook a seven, seeing no way to defend the d six pawn. I guess. trying to defend with knight b7 is just too passive yes and i probably even regain the pawn after something like knight e4 mm. if i really want to else i actually thought of c5 which again might be a very useful move in general and not to d5 just pick up the pawn with queen b4 yeah that pawn was also hanging uh, should should keep that in mind Okay, because if you play c5, knight into c5, then maybe rook d6. Knight into rook d6, and this probably is in a very happy position for my opening to be in. Okay, so in the game, knight e4. Uh, sorry, in the game, he played rook a7. Rook a7. Prithu took, and rook, rook b7. Rook b7. And I just go rook d1 in order to get a better ending if uh, all pieces are exchanged on the square of d6. Yeah, this pawn is weak here. right and this is better so he went a5 a5 rook d7 knight d7 queen d6 so i'm just trying to put pressure a lot of pressure on the weaknesses and um the main and this being the main point of my opening expand was to regain the pawn but with a lot better position <laughs> rk rk says Prithu versus Gukesh. One uh, engine guy, other never used one. Yeah, that's how chess is. You know, yeah. like both are grandmasters, both are big talents. Uh, one of them, like uh, Gukesh, never used an engine. Prithu, on the other hand, uh, uses a lot of engine. Both of them became a G became GM. Yeah. So that's why chess is like life. You know, there are different ways to lead a good life. Okay, so. Queen f6 was played by Dan, and he was like, "Let's exchange the queens so that at least I have some solace here." Uh, I guess this is a good way to play. Maybe we can ask the sure. viewers what to do here. Is this a good time to think, Prithu? Hmm. Yes, I think even Queen F6 and the move I played both are equally good. But I just rejected Queen F6 in the view of Knight F6, Rook D6, and um, something like, let's say, C5. And what if Rook C6 now trying to win this pawn? Rook C6 and Knight D7, something like that. Still holding on, yeah. Right. Or maybe instead of this, he could even go Bishop B7. 
and um, while it's again still a better position for me i just felt uh, i just didn't feel the need to uh, go into even the slightest bit of complications because the other move in my view was um, slightly more clear mm. okay by the way one question to you is why not take this pawn directly on b4 um sorry uh, can this pawn be taken on b4 directly instead of rook into d6 right so we have just didn't feel the need to go into lines after let's say rook d7 which could be followed by something like a5 and potentially giving a bit of counter play hmm okay so uh, rook into d6 here a5 takes queen d6 queen f6 queen c7 was played by prithu and he has a clear plan which is to take on d7 now get two pieces for a rook and i'm even threatening to pick up the pawn on a5 which uh, felt pretty easy in my opinion <laughs> so now the game proceeded with him picking up the pawn on b2 he is like uh, dan is like now let me take at least a pawn on b2 and prithu uh, didn't care for picking up this piece here nor did he care to pick up this pawn he was like let's move in yeah right so now this was again the perfect opportunity to make such a move like knight f5 because again now i'm threatening to hop on e7 and d6 and just the um uneven state his pieces are placed in is uh, naturally helping me a lot yeah so queen e5 oh queen queen e5 is it a piece blunder no 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 if rook d7 then queen into f5 ah that's the trick okay so white to move here right and uh, what should white play prithu please tell me when is the right time for a trivia i'm, I'm actually uh, sure not here uh, yeah yeah we're yeah, we just getting there exactly of the edge okay so knight d6 i think you have major invisible threat as i'd like to call it ah your voice was just gone for a second but now it's back yeah, yeah. He's threatening the move of c5, which might not be all that obvious, but is hugely toxic and poisonous for my opponent. Okay. And even um, wanting to pick up the pawn on c6 at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the game continues. Knight f6, c5, bishop b6, queen e7, a4. And now I think he just wanted to probably. Prithu, is there something wrong? Position. Is there something? Did you change some settings with your microphone? Uh, no. Because your voice is suddenly going and coming. I don't know. Something went wrong. No, sir. So uh, actually, fine at my end. Yeah, now it's okay. Okay. So A four, and now. Uh... Now comes the trivia. Okay. Brilliant. white to move guys how should white continue and put yourself in prithu shoes a lot of uh, tension a lot of pressure gm norm to be made He's taken a leave from school also exams were coming up a lot of studies left and there yeah. he is playing on the board has to beat his opponent what do you play oh ayush krishna is right on the ball Very nice, Ayush. Let's see if anyone else can find this one. Dynamic chess. Well done. Well done, Karthik. Very good. Very strong players here. All like very alert to the possibilities in the position. Very good. Gaurang, Uday, Pai, Deti. Entertainment on the fly. Sachin Agni, very good.
yeah okay prithu i think lot of people uh, have found it goblet fire chess life well done the right move is knight into f7 Yeah, so this was just the most pleasing move to make. It was uh, just felt like the reward of all my efforts, going down at once. <laughs> yeah, the point is, queen is attacked. You can't take with the right. bishop because you lose the queen. Uh, you can't take with because you get yourself mated on the square of d8. Oh, it's already a mate. Oh, my God. Right. Yeah. So can't take with the rook. So. And I'm picking up the bishop on e6. Yeah. On the next move. Absolutely. So he went rookie eight, eight, queen eight, ninety eight, and ninety five. Yeah, yeah, that's enough for a win now. Takes uh, rook d eight, king f eight, and uh, I mean a player of Prithu's caliber is good enough to convert this. B four is hanging, and he resigned. What a game, Prithu! Another gem, very nice. Uh, I really liked the fact that you were so well prepared in the opening with this, uh, starting with this move c4, which can be used as a good surprise weapon against the Brayer. Uh, and after and now I think it's actually being taken upon quite seriously by a lot of 2600 plus GMs, uh, leaving its reputation to. Not even a sideline. Yeah, I mean, as we can see, it's been played by Adiba and Alex Tinko. Yeah, Nakamura Alex. played it before, but recently, in recent times, uh, it has been played by uh, even Konguel. Okay, nice. Uh, Divya Deshmukh has played it. So, a lot of Indians so, have played. Shiro has played it. Uh, yeah, Shiro plays it a lot. Anand also has played it. Oh, no, this is uh, someone else. Uh, Anand Nadar, I think. Okay, Anand Nadar has played it. And uh, Nihal has played it. Wow. So, C4 is definitely something that you should look into, guys. Uh, and uh, Prithu, I know we had to cover four games today. But we could right. cover two. I guess we should yep. leave two more for the second part. I will ask the viewers if they would like... Another right. part where the remaining two games by Prithu on so. the Rui Lopez should be covered. And if they say yes, then maybe we can do it in the coming days. Uh, of course. Did you did you enjoy Prithu uh, showing these wins? I absolutely loved going over the games all over again and providing some bits of knowledge that um, helped me. And of course, as I would expect, would help all of the viewers. Yeah, brilliant. By the way, there was uh, Dr. Chess who was constantly worried about one line like Queen E2, I think the Warrel attack. And he said that uh, if Prithu can tell me something about this, maybe we'll keep it for the next part. Uh, this Queen E2, yeah. uh, this might be an interesting move to check. And a lot of people, everyone says part two. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I would love to. Uh, okay, everyone is cool about the second part of the Roy Lopez. I think, uh, guys, if you are facing the Brayer, then this is a good surprise weapon. And you can see how Prithu had prepared this move, knight e2, giving up this e4 pawn. And then queen c2, very nice move, which actually... Uh, ha got his pieces in the center and uh, some very nice decision making winning back the pawn on d6 and opponent was left uh, quite passive and eventually ended with a brilliant flurry of tactics i like this moon knight f7 very much very much well done. okay so uh, guys thank you so much prithu uh, I will see you uh, again uh, very soon. Thank you for sharing sure. your knowledge. Uh, as always, it was brilliant Good. having you here. And I uh, hope to Same. see you soon again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Now you guys can see two sagas. <laughs> I will. I will end this. Um, yeah.
and come back to scene one. And we are. So thank you all for uh, attending this session on the Rui Lopez. I hope that you learnt a lot. I know that there were several people here who couldn't uh, grasp everything because it was quite quick. There were a lot of lines shown. But I think Prithu kind of broke it down step by step. Even I tried to break it down. And I must say that all the knowledge which was shared here was very, very high quality uh, and can be useful to you if you are a Roy Lopez player from white or black. And it also teaches you some of the qualities that Prithu has as a player, which is hard work, meticulousness, going over the games of the top players, trying to find new ideas, working with a trainer. It just shows how the top level players prepare. And, and also keep in mind, every young player, every talent has his own way to go about things. As was pointed out, Gukesh is 2560 without a GM. Prithu is a grandmaster, uh, sorry, 2560 without an engine. Prithu is a grandmaster without, with heavy use of engine. So everyone has his own method. You need to find yours. Uh, and uh, yeah, watch it again if you like and try to get, uh, write down the notes if you would like. I would highly recommend it to you guys. And also I'll put the link of Karuana's DVDs in the description. So if you would like to check it out, please do. And thank you all once again. Please like the video and uh, stay tuned for part two. Bye-bye.